All right. How you doing? I'm Jeffrey Keith with the Aimless News. And today we're going to talk about censorship in the Aimless News Update for January 15th, 2021. Uganda has blocked access to social media platforms in the East African country just two days before January 14th's presidential and parliamentary elections. In a January 12th letter, the Uganda Communications Commission ordered internet service providers in the country to immediately suspend any access and use of all messaging apps and social media platforms until further notice. Some of the affected platforms include WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, which are the most popular in the country. Okay, I just wanted to put that in there because it kind of ties into what is coming next. They banned them two days before their election. Can't believe they didn't do it sooner because they didn't want Twitter and Facebook and YouTube to influence their election. Wow, what a concept. So with that in mind, you're going to love this one. I honestly can't believe Twitter just tweeted this, but Twitter just tweeted this. We strongly condemn internet shutdowns. They are hugely harmful, violate basic human rights, and the principles of the open internet. Access to information and freedom of expression, including the public conversation on Twitter, is never more important than during democratic processes, particularly elections. I mean, are you for real here? Could they be any more out of it, out of touch, oblivious to reality? They just banned, first censored and then banned, a sitting president of the United States. And they purged 70,000 other accounts. <laughs> and they're now outraged that they have been shut down. Earlier this week, in close coordination with our peers, we suspended a number of accounts targeting the election in Uganda. Hmm. So you guys, in close coordination with our peers suspended a number of accounts targeting the election in Uganda. So you mean anything you didn't agree with, you shut down. And then they come out with access to information and freedom of expression, including the public conversation. I can't even. Okay, let's move on. James O'Keefe with Project Veritas, this guy right here. If you don't know him, you should, because he is one of the few actual journalists out there. So check him out, Project Veritas. What he does is he embeds people into the enemy territory, in this case, Twitter, and they record these bozos with their own words and expose them. That's Jack Dorsey, the founder and CEO of Twitter. And he's going for that Ben Laden look. And let's hear what the founder and CEO of Twitter has to say. You can always feel free to express yourself in whatever format, manifestation feels right. do intend to do a full retro, as I said in my note, it is going to take some time. Um, and then the, the other thing, just to just to close out a little bit, we, you know, we, we are focused on one account right now, but this is going to be much bigger than just one account, and it's going to go on for much longer than just this day, this week, or the next few weeks. It's going to go on beyond the inauguration. We have to expect that. We have to be ready for that. So the focus is certainly on this account and um, how it ties to real-world violence, but also we need to think much longer term 
around how these dynamics play out over time. Um, I don't believe this is going away anytime soon. And the moves that we're making today uh, around uh, QAnon, for instance, is one such example of a much broader approach um, that we should be looking at um, and, and going deeper on. So um, the team has a lot of work and a lot of focus on this particular issue. Uh, we also need to give them the space and the support to focus on the, the much bigger picture um, because it is it is not going away. Um, you know, the, the U.S. is extremely divided. Um, our platform is uh, showing that uh, every single day, and our role is to protect the integrity of that conversation uh, and do what we can to make sure that no one is being harmed uh, based off that. And, and that is the focus, and um, that is the, the color we're going to provide. There you have it, Jack. There you have it, Jack Dorsey. There's James O'Keefe, by the way. Jack Dorsey saying the censorship is not only just beginning, it will go on for quite some time, and they will control the public discourse. Okay, moving on. How Silicon Valley, in a show of monopolistic force, destroyed Parler by Glenn Greenwald. This guy used to be a liberal. Well, he's still a liberal. He, he used to write for Vice until he couldn't take it over there anymore, and now he's on his own. Critics of Silicon Valley censorship for years heard the same refrain. Tech platforms like Facebook, Google, and Twitter are private corporations and can host or ban whoever they want. If you don't like what they're doing, the solution is not to complain or regulate them. Instead, Go create your own social media platform that operates the way you think it should. The founders of Parler heard that suggestion and tried. And over the last year, Parler encountered immense success. Millions of people who objected to increasing repression of speech on the largest platforms or who had themselves been banned signed up for the new social media company. It looked as if Parler had proven critics of Silicon Valley monopolistic power wrong. Their success showed that it was possible, after all, to create a new social media platform to compete with Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And they did so by doing exactly what Silicon Valley defenders long insisted should be done. If you don't like the rules imposed by tech giants, go create your own platform with different rules. Okay, said Parler. The number one downloaded app, right behind TikTok, uh, right ahead of TikTok, which is crazy. But today, if you want to download, sign up for, or use Parler, you will be unable to do so. That is because three Silicon Valley monopolies, Amazon, Google, and Apple, abruptly united to remove Parler from the Internet exactly at the moment when it became the most downloaded app in the country. If one were looking for evidence to demonstrate that these tech behemoths are, in fact, monopolies that engage in anti-competitive behavior in violation of antitrust laws and will obliterate any attempt to compete with them in the marketplace, it would be difficult to imagine anything more compelling and how they just use their unconstrained power to utterly destroy a rising competitor. It's already against the law to do that. We'll see if anything happens to that. Don't hold your breath. And finally, here's a little possible good news. A proposed bill seeks to allow citizens to sue tech giants for censorship. Jack Dorsey of Twitter, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. Republican legislatures in North Dakota have proposed, proposed a bill which would potentially allow residents of the state to sue social media companies which censor legal speech. According to the bill, social media websites with over 1 million users could be held liable in a civil action for damages to the persons whose speech is restricted, censored, or suppressed, and to any person who reasonably otherwise would have received a writing speech or a publication. 
companies found guilty of violating a bill would be liable for treble damages for compensatory, consequential, and incidental damages. However, federal law trumps state law, and Section 230 is still a law in the land. I love hearing this, but I don't think much is going to happen with it. All right, that is going to do it for this edition of the Aimless News. Subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share this video. Because remember, the Aimless News must be told. <laughs>